I'll be right back. Shanghai, on the other hand, we arrived in the middle of the night. Super sketchy. ATM card did not work. I had $50 cash US on me. That's all the cash we had. And uh, we were terrified to leave the Airbnb for like 48 hours. And the food that they left for us in the Airbnb was like a loaf of bread, a bag of potato chips. I think we might have had Oreo cookies, a couple Heinekens, and some uh, single use strawberry jam, grape jellies. So we lived on that for a couple of days before we finally were brave enough to leave. And uh, the first meal we had was at a hot pot place. Uh, and I proceeded to burn the shit out of my tongue <laughs> because I was so hungry and I couldn't wait to eat. It only got worse from there. Sierra got, was pickpocketed, <laughs> yep. which was actually a pretty dope brass sculpture of a Buddha. I was excited to get this and bring this home from Shanghai. Uh, and then after that, we actually had a pretty lovely time, but we got the hell out of there. So at this elephant sanctuary in Phuket, uh, it was just a very humbling experience to be in such close proximity with these massive, majestic beings. Uh, and there were no barricades between us and the elephants. We actually got to feed them. They eat 300 pounds of food per day. This is just in from our resident elephant expert. <laughs> it was actually we were out there uh the super bowl day didn't make it to the super bowl so oh, we go play with elephants favorite memory from south america beyond all the delicious empanadas that we ate in argentina probably the best experience and I, i'm sure sierra would agree with me was our time that we spent in mendoza we went horseback riding at the base of the andes which was at sunset it was like once in a lifetime, like, oh, like I can't believe that I'm here right now. This is so beautiful. Like, and I don't even ride horses. <laughs> I was nervous to get on the horse because I didn't want to fall off. It took him four years to get on a horse. But I was actually terrified when we were there because apparently the resort that we stayed at has been ransacked by, uh, what was what was the uh, bandits? Armed bandits. Armed bandits. And we read that like the day we checked in. Sierra saw it and didn't want to share it with me because she knew that I would freak out. And actually the first couple nights there, I was having like night terrors yeah. in my sleep. Fortunately, we, not, we did not encounter any armed bandits, but uh, the threat is real. No. Yeah, it was very no. real. <laughs> it was not. Every time a truck drove by late at night, I was on high alert. I think this came up in a vlog before, and I mentioned uh, that I was very interested in engineering and being an aerospace engineer specifically working at NASA or doing something like that. Um, but beyond just academics, uh, I was very passionate about music. And I, I played a, a few instruments in middle school and high school. The alto sax, I played the uh, trombone, I played the tuba. I'll be right back. But Sierra got me this wonderful plastic trombone. That's pretty much all I'm capable of doing at this moment. Oh, what I did instead of picking up the trombone again, I uh, got involved with the nonprofit in Harlem, Harlem School of the Arts, and uh, they don't have the strongest music program, but I think it's something that they're working on building, and I want to be a part of that and, and help share my passion with music with the youth, and uh, it meant a lot to me growing up, so I'm looking forward to being able to do that with them. It's all about, or at least for me, it's all about building something that'll last beyond my playing career. Uh, something that I could leverage uh, professionally, personally, uh, and, and to have something to walk away to. Uh, not necessarily in being a professional Instagrammer, but uh, something that I could leverage to say pursue a career in. I wouldn't necessarily be interested in this uh, sports broadcasting or another job opportunity where I'm in the public eye 
uh, as a spokesperson or uh, you know whatever it might be professionally uh, even if I'm on Wall Street doing something I think when people know who you are and you have a platform that's valuable and so that's something I can use uh, when I'm done playing. I've, I've recently enjoyed spending some time with my teammates uh, I've been doing that more than I have in the past uh, we just went out to dinner last week and and uh, during the season we hang out once a week and go out to eat. Uh, so spending, spending some time with the teammates, building that camaraderie. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've been in, in an NFL locker room, but it's like 53 comedians. Everyone has a joke. <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks they're funny and most of them are. So it's cool to, to be around those guys and it's nice to have a laugh or two. I, I, I don't consider myself the funniest, but low key, you know, I, I catch them off guard with some jokes here or there. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please press thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Also, if you have any additional questions you'd like me to answer about football, uh, playing in the NFL, my interests off the field, feel free to drop a comment below. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>